Welcome to our LHB topical discussion for today, and the topic is eternal security. Can a Christian lose their salvation? This topic has been hotly debated within the church, and some opponents of this view uh, say that, that this is a license to sin. Is this true? Is the eternal security of the believer a license to sin? Or does the Bible teach, <clears throat> pardon me, that children of God get disciplined when they sin? Or how about the people that walk away from the faith or seem to walk away from the faith? Is it possible that they were never saved to begin with? We here at the Last Hour Bereans Ministries, we believe in the eternal security of the believer. And what a blessed gift that is. You see, if we couldn't do anything to save ourselves, what makes anyone think we can do anything to maintain our own salvation? Yes, the Holy Spirit does dwell in us and he empowers us. But we still have free will. And sometimes... This fleshy part that we inhabit, we allow to get its way. And God knows this, and he knew it before he saved us. But yet he still saved us. You see, once you're in Christ, you're in Christ forever. No one, not Satan, not another human being, can pull you out of the Father's hands. Salvation is a free gift given by the God who loves us, and he gave that gift to imperfect people who he knew would sin, even after the cross. Yes, I know this is uh, unbelievable, but there are Christians that sin. You know, <laughs> that's, that's just a reality. You may not sin at the extent that you used to, you may have a conscience now that fights against that sin. You have a struggle in your flesh against your spirit and all of that. And that's good. That's something you didn't have before. You see, when you were lost, when I was lost, we didn't have a conflicting nature. We didn't have a nature that said, hey, we shouldn't do that. Let's not do that. No, no, no. We had a, nation, uh, a nature that agreed with the flesh. We had a, a dead spirit and a soul that agreed with the flesh. And all the lust that the flesh wanted, we, if we could get away with it, we would do it. But after salvation, there's a difference. We don't desire sin. We fight against it. When someone cuts you off on the highway, we, we struggle. We hold our tongues. When you see a, a, a half-naked woman cross your path... Most men that I know that are Christians, they bounce their eyes and they turn and they go the other way or look the other way. They don't give in to these things as often. Not saying that they don't ever give in to them, but they don't as often as they used to. And they fight against it. Because we're new creatures in Christ. And we're growing in holiness every day in our Christian life as we read and grow in the Word of God, the Bible. But that's the subject of holiness, holy living in your saved life. Christians cannot, however, lose the gift of salvation because they didn't do anything to earn that gift. As a matter of fact, the scriptures back up this view of eternal security. The answer is in the title or the, the, the phrase eternal security. Security or eternal salvation. Eternal life would not be very eternal if you can lose it. It would be temporary or conditional life, but it wouldn't be eternal life. Eternal life is God's life given to the believer. In order for eternal life to stop in the believer, God's life has to stop. It's his life, not ours. He's given us his life inside every believer. 
That's what being partakers of the divine nature means. It doesn't mean we become gods. It means that we are partakers in God's divine nature, his eternal life. That's what we have. And what a blessing that is and what a gift. And what, isn't it awesome to know that there's nothing you and I can do to lose that? Isn't that comforting? That we can rest assured in the promises of God to keep us despite ourselves at times? My friends, don't let anyone rob you of the joy of the eternal security of the believer. I'm going to read some scriptures. And uh, because I don't like just giving my opinion, I don't like doing that. I like to back up what I'm saying with scriptures. And we have tons of scriptures that tell us that the Christian is eternally secure. Listen to this. Now, here in 1 John 5.13... Jesus tells us that, or John tells us, sorry, that we may know, may know that we have eternal life. Listen to the verse. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Did you get that? That you may know that you have eternal life. This is not guesswork. And again, eternal life. Eternal is existing forever. Okay? Here goes Romans 6.14. Speaking of sin not having dominion over us anymore. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, how is it that sin doesn't have dominion over the believer anymore? I mean, obviously, there's believers that sin. So how could this verse, it seems like a contradiction, but it's not. Sin cannot have dominion over someone where grace abounds, meaning where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. God's Forgiving power overcomes whatever sin you could commit. The most heinous sin you could commit. The cross paid for all of that. That's why it can't have dominion over you anymore. It's impossible. If a Christian commits sin, there is no way that it can overcome the cross of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus says, it is finished. It is paid in full. Past, present, and future sins. So there's no sin that can have dominion over you and I that are in Christ. Check out Revelation 3.5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not... Blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. It's a promise to not blot out our names from the book of life. Let's go to Jude one twenty four. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless. Before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Wow. Jude is saying that Christ is able to keep us from falling. Falling. Falling away. Falling from grace. As a lot of people like to use that phrase. Even though there's no such phrase. Um, He says, Now unto him, God, that is able to keep you, that's you and I, from falling, and to present you, look at this, faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So not only does he keep us from falling, he presents us faultless. That's beautiful. And of course, we love John 3.16, but let's look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have Everlasting, there goes that word again, everlasting life. 
For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Period. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. It says, he who believeth on him is not condemned. There is no condemnation for those in Christ. None. It doesn't say, he who believes on him is not condemned unless they sin again. No, no. He who believes on Christ is not condemned. Period. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son has, present tense, Everlasting, that word everlasting again, life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Very clear scriptures. John 6.37 All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. Jesus himself says he will in no way cast out anyone who has come to him. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now listen, in order for you to believe in the loss of salvation, you would have to believe that Jesus just lied to all of us. You would have to believe that Jesus is a liar. In order for you to say that you can lose your salvation by whatever sin you commit, as a believer, you would have just called Jesus a liar. Because he just said that he gives to us eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. 2 Corinthians 1.9 but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver, present tense, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver, future. Who delivered us, past, and does deliver, present, and he will yet deliver, future, past, present, future sins, all taken care of by Jesus Christ. It's clear, the scriptures are clear on where it stands with the eternal security of the believer. It's only us that want to make uh, uh, something you know, different out of these verses or <laughs> twist the scriptures to make it fit our agenda. And this is, I mean, these scriptures are clear. Hebrews 10.10 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Hebrews 10.14 For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Um, <laughs> Hebrews 10.39 But we are not of them who draw back unto the perdition unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hebrews 13.5 Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. My friends, these scriptures are just a few. There are plenty more. And I'm telling you, by the authority of the word of God, that the, if you're in Christ, you are in Christ forever. There's nothing you, Satan, or anybody else can do to pluck you away from God's salvation. There is no way. He has made prom. If we can't believe these promises, then you might as well close your Bible and throw it away. He put those verses there for our comfort. For our comfort, for our joy, for our peace of mind. So we can go forth ministering without the, the worry that, oh my goodness, if I, if I think wrong, if I have a momentary lapse of anger or lust, if I look and say, oh, that woman's attractive, what did I just do? 
we we would you know we have the 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 the, the knowledge and peace of mind that these things are already paid for. We can continue the mission without any worry. And that's the point of eternal security. You are, do you honestly believe that God, who says man cannot save themselves, would then turn over that very salvation to man? Really? Here goes one last one um, that I have to read um, because this goes in line with those who say that we must maintain our salvation after we are saved by grace. Galatians 3.3 3. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? And this is the question I would like to ask all of those who teach that we must maintain a certain amount of holiness and law keeping in order to maintain our salvation that we better not slip and we better remember to confess every sin because we better not forget any because if we do we're disqualified I would like to ask them what Paul asked the Galatians are you so foolish having begun in the spirit and saved by grace by faith alone in Christ are you now made perfect by the flesh and my friends, I'll leave you with that question. And until next time, keep looking up. Because our Lord is soon to return. Maranatha, and God bless.